What did Jesus actually think about himself? Here there are three pieces of evidence. Number one, his teaching centered on himself. Most religious teachers, certainly the great religious teachers, point away from themselves and they point to God. Jesus, in pointing to God, pointed to himself. There's a hunger in every human heart. Three leading psychologists of the 20th century have all recognized this. Freud said people are hungry for love. Jung, people are hungry for security. Adler, people are hungry for significance. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the one person who can satisfy that hunger in every human heart. Many people are walking today in darkness, depression, disillusionment, even despair. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. But when we die, we die. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. Many today are dissatisfied with materialism. They're searching for some kind of spiritual reality. And Jesus said, I am the way. People are looking for a system of thinking on which to base their lives. Jesus said, I am the truth. <laughs> Jesus said, if you want to know what God looks like, look at me. Anyone who's seen me has seen God. So that his, his teaching centered on himself. Second piece of evidence is his indirect claims. Jesus said a number of things which were not direct claims, but show that he regarded himself as in the, being in the same position as God. So, for example, it's well known that he claimed to be able to forgive sins. Now, of course, we can all forgive people who have sinned against us. But to forgive someone who has sinned against someone else is something that only God can do. Jesus' claim to be the unique Son of God, there are three logical possibilities. Number one is that it was not true. That Jesus didn't realize it. He really genuinely thought he was God, but he was mistaken. He was deluded. In other words, he was mad. Second logical possibility is that it's not true, but Jesus knew perfectly well it was not true, in which case he was an imposter, he was evil. And the third logical possibility is that it was true. What evidence is there then to support what he said? First area we should look at, we should look at obviously his life. Look at first of all his teaching, what he said. The teaching of Jesus is widely acknowledged to be the greatest ever to have fallen from the lips of a human being. Take, for example, the Sermon on the Mount. Love your neighbor as yourself. If someone hits you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Do to others what you would like them to do to you. If we were wanting to look at the evidence for, to support his claims, we look at his, first of all, at his teaching. Secondly, we'd look at his, what he did. Thirdly, his character. You know, the character of Jesus has impressed millions of people who wouldn't call themselves Christians. And then, fourthly, there's his fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. No one else in the history of the world has ever had a whole book written about them, or a whole collection of books written about them, before they were born. Jesus fulfilled over 300 Old Testament prophecies. 29 of them he fulfilled in a single day.
fifth piece of evidence, and the most important of all, is his conquest of death. The physical resurrection of Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of Christianity. That's why we start the Alpha Course, we don't start with the issue, is there a God? We start with the session, who is Jesus?